successfully bribe a newspaper. Robert Mugabe has ruled Zimbabwe for nearly 37 years and at age 92 is the world's oldest sitting president. But talking about his age and a possible political succession can land Zimbabwean journalists in trouble. It's a difficult topic to ignore given that Mugabe's ZANU-PF is divided as party members vie for position or align themselves with potential successors. State-owned news outlets like the Herald newspaper and the Zimbabwean Broadcasting Corporation remain loyal to Mugabe, but even they appear Appear to be backing one faction in the ZANU PF, albeit indirectly, by attacking the other. All of this maneuvering comes on the back of last year's civil unrest, the biggest anti government demonstration seen in Zimbabwe for years, which slowly but surely faded away. The social media movement, so instrumental in calling people out onto the streets, largely went silent. The question is why. The listening posts Nick Muirhead now from Zimbabwe, where the big issue for the country's news media is. What comes next? These are uncertain times in Zimbabwe, and stable times. Last year, the anti-government protests were the biggest the country had seen in years. Unemployment is rife, infrastructure is crumbling, and the failing economy has been compounded by a cash crisis. And the aging president, Robert Mugabe, is unwilling to make way for a successor. So, last month, when the ruling party, Mugabe's ZANU-PF, held its annual conference, it needed a strong story to come out of the event. The same local reporters the government had been turning the screws on were present in force to cover the gathering. And after waiting for our accreditation for four months, the listening post finally got in. Among Mugabe's messages, he did not want the media meddling with the country's political future. For goodness sake, it doesn't help getting the newspapers to intervene in our, our quarrels and disagreements. There's a growing political divide, a split in the ZANU-PF, and Zimbabwe's newspapers appear to be choosing sides. The state-owned Herald, the most widely circulated paper in the country, is backing one faction headed by Vice President Emerson Manangagwa at the expense of cabinet ministers from the other side. They are targeting three ministers. The Minister of Higher Education, uh, Jonathan Moyo, who is also former uh, information minister at one time. There is the president's nephew, Patrick Shua, who is Minister of Youth, and the, the Minister of Local Government, Sevia Kasukweri. These ministers in the past three months have been uh, attacked by the public media in, in a way that we have never seen before. Privately owned papers like Newsday and The Standard have been less obvious than The Herald, but their coverage is more favourable to a faction that includes Education Minister Jonathan Moyo. Moyo generates much of his own news. He uses Twitter to take on his ZANU-PF rivals, creating a social media spectacle that has left President Mugabe Unimpressed. We do not run or organize matters of the party or settle our grievances through Twitter and Facebook, etc., whatever. There is no other ZANU PF minister who is tweeting except Professor Jonathan Moy. It is clear who is at the forefront of using Twitter to attack opponents, even to attack the media. To attack even the Herald, if we write something that he doesn't agree with, he's quick to attack us. Whenever we do a story, we do not make the mistake of not conducting them, but sometimes they do not talk, take our course. That political struggles are reflected in the media is not a new phenomenon in Zimbabwe. What is unusual is the frequency of attacks on ZANU-PF ministers in state media, which signals to many that those news outlets are starting to align themselves with a likely successor. Criticizing the president still remains off limits. Any questions over his age, health, capacity to lead are left to privately owned newspapers. But those journalists need to proceed with caution. In early December, a video of Mugabe apparently struggling to leave the podium after a speech went viral. The privately owned weekly paper, The Standard, sent a reporter to speak with the information minister about the incident. When the minister was, was asked about the president's uh, health, he became very hostile. 
He asked the reporter who had sent him to ask those questions. This explains the, the kind of relationship that we have with the Minister of Information. They suspect that the private media is pushing a foreign agenda against the president. African culture, especially here in Zimbabwe, is very averse to discussing a person's ill health, especially someone of that age. So you see a lot of the time whenever the president is in public, there is a huge focus on trying to establish how much longer he has to live. And I think obviously Zonu PF has an interest in, you know, leaving that discussion out completely. The private media claim that there is closure of democratic space in Zimbabwe. But honestly, if you had to do a content analysis of the, what comes out in these papers, the way they call the president names, the way they call the first family names, people are free to say what they want. The government does give privately owned newspapers some leeway, but only because they have a limited reach in the country. Far more people get their news from broadcast media, where the state-controlled Zimbabwean Broadcasting Corporation has a near monopoly. ZBC is the only domestic TV channel in the country, and it stays on message. The few privately owned radio stations are mostly loyal to the ZANU-PF. It was social media that caught the ruling party off guard last year, when a wave of anti-government protests was sparked by a video posted on Facebook. It feels as if I just want to belong to another country, this flag. The video, uploaded by a pastor named Ivan Mawarire, launched a social media movement called Hashtag This Flag and multiple others followed. Activists relied on phone technology to spread the word and get people onto the streets. But as the movements grew, the state machinery was deployed in full force and the demonstrations were put down. You had riot police, you had the army in some instances, people started getting arrested, um, people started getting beaten up, and they were very indiscriminate in their attacks on the populace. There was one video that went viral of a woman, you know, who was, you know, raising her hands up in surrender and they beat her to a pulp. These online movements, they used WhatsApp to organize people. So when the government started threatening that they can seize people's phones, people started fearing that maybe they would be arrested. Pastor Ivan leaving the country was a huge blow to the, to the movement. And I think uh, the whole aspect of the movement was around a, a phrase saying, which means we're not afraid anymore and we don't want anymore. So him leaving kind of contradicted the, that statement and it kind of brought back, you know, the, 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 the fear amongst people. Last week, Zimbabwe's telecom authority issued a directive to mobile phone networks that effectively pushed up the cost of data from $1 for 250 megabytes to $1 for just 10 megabytes. It looks like the government is trying to price Zimbabweans out of social media because last year, the tactic worked. Back in August, at the height of the protests, the Mugabe government reportedly issued a temporary ban on mobile phone networks offering data bundles, the promotional packages that make data more affordable. With the country experiencing a cash shortage that has citizens queuing at bank machines for hours on end, and withdrawal limits set as low as $50 a day in some cases, Zimbabweans need to prioritize where they spend their money. So as the price of data went up, engagement with the social media movements went down. People focused on their daily needs and buying data wasn't a priority anymore. So we had a significant drop in viewership, significant drop in impressions on Twitter, significant drop in reach on Facebook. That is when the whole uh, social media movements, the hashtag movements started to die. It's a platform for the elite, but when it comes to the crunch, is the, the grannies, the grandpas, the men and women in the village who always deliver the vote for Zanubiev. Zanubiev always does badly in urban areas where these uh, we, people who have access to social media are. So these people who are doing these social media campaigns are basically preaching to the converted. It's of no effect to Zanubiev. Nearly 37 years into the rule of Robert Mugabe, his power remains entrenched and no opposition in politics or the media have been able to dislodge him. So while some news outlets prepare for who comes next, today it's President Mugabe and his government wants to keep it that way, even if they have to hit Zimbabweans where it already hurts. And that 
for now is the Zimbabwean story.